Well, hey, Lake Viewers, uh, Danny here again. Welcome to another episode of Lakeview TV. Uh, this afternoon, we are out uh, by our high ropes course over at the villages here. So I'm currently standing uh, directly underneath our pamper pole, and we've got our zip line over this way. Uh, yeah, stay tuned. We'll have a lot of information coming your way. Oh. So first up here, I want to just look at some of our equipment and uh, what we do. So this is one of our standard uh, seat harnesses. You've probably, if you've been to camp, you've been in one of these before. Uh, we use these for our zip line, for um, a lot of our climbing tower stuff as well. Uh, and these are a pretty simple harness here. So every day when we pull these out, we do a few things just to inspect them here. So first thing, we're going to check all of our, our webbing and straps, make sure there's no cuts or tears, uh, no frays, anything like that. Uh, we're also going to check <clears throat> these buckles here. We want to check for any break, cracks, breaks, bends, rust, different things like that on our buckles. Uh, we're going to check uh, these purple loops here. These are, are important. These are your tie-in points, your attachment points on here. Uh, we check all the uh, stitching and threading here to make sure nothing's pulling out or anything like that. Uh, so we check every single harness before we ever use it um, on our ropes course here. Now the next thing we have uh, is our rope. So if you're going to do any kind of climbing, you're going to need a rope to be attached to. Uh, that way if you do slip and fall, you're not going to fall very far. And so uh, we have a lot of different ropes here. Uh, this one is specifically uh, used for our pamper pole, but I'm going to show you some things here with it today. So this is what we call uh, a dynamic rope. And if you ever go to uh, a climbing gym or anything like that, um, <clears throat> that's what a dynamic rope is. And the reason you use a dynamic rope is because when you fall, it stretches uh, so that you don't have what we call a shock load. Uh, if you were to use just a standard rope you got from like Home Depot or something and you fell on it, it would probably hurt really bad. Uh, might even do some real physical damage to you because of uh, just that force, that impact of your body, uh, the rope doesn't give at all. These ropes, they stretch. Uh, kind of like you think of it as like a shock absorber uh, to kind of dampen that impact when you fall. Um, so this rope, uh, let me find the end here. I lost it momentarily. Here it is. Uh, again, this rope is used specifically for our pamper pull. And any time that we uh, pull a rope out to use it for the day, we do it's called flaking it. So that's what I'm doing right now. And it's simply running my, my hand over the entire length of the rope. And what I'm doing here is I'm inspecting the rope. I'm feeling for certain different things. So uh, I want to feel for what we call an hourglass. Uh, it kind of looks like the shape of an hourglass. It's a little soft spot. Uh, every rope has a, a sheath that protects the inner core. The core is what actually stretches. Uh, the colored part here is just the sheath that's just a protection for that core. And so an hourglass would indicate that there's some interior damage to that core, that some strands have broken uh, inside of it. Almost think of it like a, a, a muscle. You know, if you have a torn muscle, you know, there's going to be some broken strands. And the same thing can happen here uh, to our core. The other thing I'm feeling for is what we call a, a pull or a booger. Uh, and that's a part where the sheath has been damaged uh, so that the, the core is actually sticking out of the sheath. All right, I'm going to show you guys uh, some of the different knots uh, that we use here at Lakeview Ministries. So um, the first one, the most common one that we use, this is for all of our attachments. Uh, whether you're at the climbing tower, over at the village, uh, like the Jacob's Ladder, or the pamper pole. Uh, it's called a bowlin on a bite. So I'm going to get a little bit closer here so you guys can see this. Alright. So what you're going to do is this is called a bite. We take a bite of the rope. Anytime you take a little section like this, we call that a bite. So I take a couple fingers here. I get a good length of rope. And what I'm going to do is I take it and I wrap that tail, the loose end of the rope, around my fingertips two times. Then I take that tail and I tuck it through those coils and I pull it. And now I can kind of adjust how long this tail is um, by pulling on opposite ends of the knot here. Uh, but basically I always want to be able to give myself a thumbs up. You see that there? Uh, if, I, if I grab this excess tail sticking out of the knot, I want to be able to give myself a thumbs up. Uh, the reason being, if it's too short, you know, there's a chance, a slow, ch a small chance, but there's a chance that it could pull through and undo the knot. And if it's too long, well, then you just got a lot of loose tail around there flapping around, uh, going to hit you in the face or something. Now, 
This is where it gets a little tricky with the double bowline on a bite. Uh, so I like to get about 16 inches, all right, length on my loop here. So about 16 inches in length I find to be nice. And then I'm gonna tie what at first is called an overhand knot. So this is just your standard knot. All right, if you've ever tied a knot, you've tied what's called an overhand knot. Uh, so basically, take your hand, wrap it around your hand, and stick the bite through where your hand was. All right, and we get this overhand knot, just like that. Now this overhand knot, you're gonna tie it just loosely. You're not gonna pull it tight because this is where it gets a little tricky. Um, you're gonna take your other hand then, you're gonna stick it through this bite, and you grab these two strands on the other side. Okay, think of it uh, Think of it as like this is the lips and this is the tongue uh, sticking out like a dog tongue. All right, you're gonna come through, you're gonna grab these two strands and you're gonna pull them through that tongue. And then this, you're gonna tighten that down and that's gonna give you a nice bowling, double bowling on a bite right here. Okay, I'll show you guys that one more time because that's a little tricky. All right, I'm gonna loosen this back up. And you really have to work this knot. Uh, you have to kind of just play with it work it around. So once again, uh, we start by making that overhand knot here. And then we take our hands through, we grab those two strands, pull them through, and then you have to just kind of work it down, just kind of pull that knot back and forth. And you want it to sit right up against uh, your double fisherman's there, like that, okay? So that's what our double bowline on a bite looks like. And this is what we use for uh, almost all of our tie-in points on our ropes course. All right, so that's double bowling on a bite. Uh, I also want to show you, this is one of my favorite ones. This one is really useful. Uh, you guys can use this around the house. Um, this is called a clove hitch. And now, uh, the difference between a hitch and a knot. knot. A knot will hold its shape uh, by itself, but a hitch needs something to go through it to keep its shape. And then you'll see that here in just a second. So, what I do, take tie a clove hitch, is I take a, a length of rope, just like this. I flip one end away from me and I flip the other end towards me. So I kind of have uh, two hanging strands of rope that one is back and one is forwards or on opposite side of this, this middle section here. All right, then what you do is you're gonna take, in my case, I'm gonna take my right hand and put it behind my left hand. Now if you did it the other way, then you move that. Um, if you do it the wrong way, it's just gonna make a circle like this. If you do it the wrong way, it's just gonna make a circle. If you do it the right way, it's gonna make an X, kind of like a little pretzel there, okay? Then you need, this is where it becomes a hitch. This is why it's a hitch, because if I just let go, it's just gonna fall apart, right? But if I stick something through it, like a carabiner, and now I pull on one strand and back and forth, now it becomes a knot. And what's cool about this is I could pull on either end as hard as I want, and it's not gonna go anywhere, right? It locks itself in place. Um, but what's really cool is when I take this carabiner out, it just falls apart and I'm back to a rope, uh, just like that. So what do we use this for? Well, we use this for hauling things up and down trees. Uh, we use this for uh, tying in like ground anchors and stuff like that. Uh, so for yourself, it's a really cool one to learn because uh, you can make a really simple way to grab onto things, uh, pull things if ever you're, you know, need to tie something up. Uh, this is a great way to do it, a nice little clove hitch here. All right, well guys, uh, I'm gonna take you up one of our trees here with me. So I've got my harness on here. It's a little, a little bit beefier. This is our, our maintenance harness here so I can carry a whole bunch of stuff up the tree with me uh, for any kind of maintenance work and stuff like that. Uh, we got what we call lobster claws here. Uh, these are my, my vertical ascents. I'm gonna use these to climb up our tree. I uh, don't need a rope because I'll use these to attach into anchors uh, as we go up the tree here. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys at the top. No, yucky! No, yucky! <laughs> well, we're up here at the top now, uh, probably about 25, 30 feet uh, off the ground here. And I'm just in a really comfy spot. This is one of my favorite places to just sit, uh, relax. That's what uh, you know. people say, oh man, I'm afraid of heights or nervous about heights. And yeah, absolutely. A lot of people are. Um, one of the things I tell people uh, if they're ever on a high ropes course is to just uh, sit, sit in their gear, sit in their harness. And you can feel, feel the rope holding you, um, that you're not going anywhere. It uh, helps build trust in the system. So you really have to trust your gear. Uh, so you can see here, I'm attached in a couple places. 
So whenever possible on our course, we always uh, try to be attached in two places. So uh, this is what I told you in one of those anchors. So I'm attached to this anchor here and up there I've got a staple and that staple is just for positioning. Uh, it just holds me up a little bit higher. A um, couple things going on. So uh, this is one of our traverses here. Campers will recognize this one. Um, we've got our belay cables up here though. There's a couple different things you can use uh, for uh, attaching your belay cable. So <clears throat> these are what we call wire rope clips. Uh, it's kind of a, it's got a U. Um, you can see better on these ones here. Uh, it's got a red U that goes through a saddle. So uh, we call the saddle. Um, we always say never saddle a dead horse. Uh, so the wire has the live end and the dead end. So the live end goes out and the dead end is the tail. So the live end should always go next to the saddle. The dead end goes next to the U. And so when we inspect uh, these wire rope clips, you know, we're looking for a couple things. We're looking for rust. We're looking for cracking. Uh, we're also going to check to make sure that these uh, nuts are properly tightened. So uh, we should be able to see four threads on the uh, exposed end here of that U uh, for all of our nuts. Also, each bolt has a backup loop around it. So uh, this loop uh, secures onto the cable end here. Uh, this termination and um, what that there's for is if for some reason this bolt that goes through the tree uh, there's something to go wrong with that bolt and that bolt were to fail uh, this backup loop is going to secure that cable uh, to the tree to allow us to safely lower the participant even if something were to happen okay so those are wire rope clips up above me though uh, these are what we call uh, copper ferrules i'm gonna try to get a place where you guys can see those a little bit better um, but basically it's a copper sleeve that gets clamped down over the cable. Uh, so on any belay cable, which is what a participant would be attached to, uh, you need to have either two of these copper ferrules uh, swedged down or three, three of these wire rope clips. And that's gonna make a cable uh, belay quality. Uh, the other thing that we have going on up here is our zip line cable, which is wrapped around the tree. Uh, you notice we have these wooden blocks here. So we uh, always have to adjust because trees uh, they grow, they change, um, so we have to adjust the cable and also uh, you never want this cable to uh, directly butt up against your tree because you know it kind of becomes a little choke uh, collar for them, uh, it could choke your tree off. So we have these wooden blocks here uh, to space out that cable uh, away from the tree and so every so often we have to adjust the length of the cable here um, just to get it sitting right around, around our tree. And then you can see uh, that cable, those are actually what we call fist grips. Uh, they work very similarly to our wire rope clips. So that's what we're looking up here, guys. And also, uh, you can see over there, there's the new village, uh, Outback Village. Progress is coming along really well. Uh, we're very grateful for the laborers working on that and just excited to have uh, that new village ready for this coming summer. Well, thanks again, Lake viewers, for uh, joining us here this afternoon. We hope you learned something uh, new or found something interesting about our ropes course here. Uh, go ahead, try those knots out at home. Uh, try to tie them. Uh, they're a lot of fun to play around with. And yeah, we're just uh, hoping you guys have a great, safe weekend. Stay healthy out there. Uh, we're looking forward to having all of you on a ropes course here at camp uh, in just a couple months.